What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Here we are with another reaction and in this one we have India make pseudo satellite. Is it a bird, a plane, or a satellite? Now before we dive into this video, if you guys happen to enjoy, please don't forget to smash that subscribe button, give the video a thumbs up. Also, if you would like to support the channel by becoming a member, all you gotta do is hit that join button to receive your exclusive benefits. See what we got with this satellite. Drone or a high altitude platform. All of 23 kilos, but it can fly for up to 10 hours. Dang! This very special plane has been developed by the National Aerospace Laboratories, a part of the Council of Scientific and Industrial Research or the CSIR, a place which knows how to make things which fly. A very special technology mm. which can be used for both disaster management and also for spying when required. I have with me Dr. Okay. Venkata Krishnan, the person who's in charge of the making of this high altitude platform. Thanks a lot for joining us, Dr. Venkata Krishnan. Most happy. Can you, t t can you tell me what this little bird, lightweight bird is all about? Okay. So basically it's a, a UAV or unmanned aerial vehicle. So, <laughs> but it's a UAV with a difference. The difference being that unlike a, a conventional UAV which flies in the atmosphere, this goes up to the stratosphere, up to 20 kilometers altitude. That's the final goal. And it will be solar powered with a battery inside it to last through the night. So what you're Dang. seeing here is a subscale version of the final UAV, which is only, I say only, but 12 meter wingspan. The final one will have a 30 meter wingspan, same as a yeah. A320. Dang. And these are extremely oh, lightweight yeah. because it has to be all about endurance, endurance and endurance. And these are the solar panels which power the plane to be in flight? Yes, yes. So That's so awesome. Uh, here we carry no fuel on board. So the sun produces uh, solar uh, radiation which impinges on the solar panels and uh, gets stored into the batteries which are all inside the wing. Oh, and the batteries are also inside yes, the wing? the batteries are inside the wing. So okay. essentially mm -hmm. it is a, uh, it's an energy budget which we have to frugally manage, like, something like managing a household. So budget. is it like a glider mm -hmm. or why does it have propellers? Yes. So it is a part glider, a part powered glider. Why is it, mm -hmm. do I say it's a glider? Because it has to have incredible uh, endurance the final version has to be aloft for 90 days. 90 days? 90 days, non-stop. And that too is non -stop. limited by the cycle life of the battery. Like your cell phone batteries, mm. all batteries have a cycle life. So, mm -hmm. uh, because of this, it should glide for very long distances for each uh, uh, meter of height loss. So, it's a glider. At the same time, you don't want it to lose height. So, it has uh, these little propellers which push it forward. Now this hmm. very uh, aircraft has flown up to seven and a half kilometers of altitude and mm -hmm. uh, been aloft for 10 hours and 10 minutes. And Dang. this 10 hours this has been this aloft. This particular aircraft and, uh, the, and it has flown several flights. There have been more than 35 flights with this aircraft alone. We have others also like this and this is as yet a subscale prototype. Now, what is this airframe made of? What is the, this? The airframe has to be, again, extremely weight, li uh, light uh, uh, weight. Uh, in fact, like you uh, pointed out, this is only 23 kgs with a 12 meter uh, wingspan. So it is all made of carbon fiber, which is extremely light and extremely strong. Now, does That's this so cool. work? Autonomously, or d does one have to kind yes. of manually control it? Okay, that's a good Since question. When we are looking for this kind of endurance, I think first of all, like this is absolutely incredible. Uh, the fact that it's able to stay in the air, he said 90 days is what they're expecting it to do until the battery life cycle is over. So it's solar powered during the day, and during night, it's battery powered. Uh, and I guess during the day, while that solar power would also be used to charge, recharge the battery, 
so that the battery can work throughout the night is, is insane to me. Uh, and the fact that it goes above the atmosphere, uh, this is this is literally like incredible above the stratosphere. Is that what he said? Um, I think this is absolutely genius. Just when I see videos like showing technology that I would never even think about, technology that absolutely blows my mind. I'm so fascinated because I'm like, first of all, like humanity has come so freaking far in what we're capable of that I can't even fathom a lot of the things that, that, that we're capable of. Um, and then India is just absolutely incredible. They're, they're technology, technology wise, they're hitting everything out of the park and they're, they're always innovating. That's what's so special about the country. Always innovating. A human pilot will experience fatigue so mm -hmm. this bird is completely autonomous. Wow. Uh, as you can see in wow. the videos, it takes off autonomously, climbs to its uh, desired altitude and goes to the location autonomously and comes back and lands autonomously. That's it's incredible. It's even programmed to come back and land when the battery is low or there are problems or uh, as commanded by a human even. Now, what else can this do? Truly, you said truly one phenomenal. is disasters. What can it do in disaster situations? Okay. So basically the beauty of such aircraft and I'm talking of the final uh, version which flies at 20 kilometers in altitude is that it can be used for a variety of purposes. One of them say disasters. So in a disaster situation you have whether it's a flood or similar you have complete loss of communication you want to surveil the disaster area you want to decide what is the best method then such an aircraft can very easily relate to you information it can also act as a mobile tower in the sky oh meaning you put a like a tower on the ground you put a tower on top perfect so basically the, uh, 4g or 5g communicator which is in the payload let's look at 6g now 5g is, yes. 5g uh, is there now yeah. what else what are the what is this being come this yes. side sir so 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 basically it is again a very con uh, conventional aircraft configuration like you see in any uh, commercial aircraft which we fly in you have mm. a wing a horizontal tail and a vertical tail you have minimal control surfaces designed to keep the bird in the air or maneuver it so you have the usual what we call as the wings the ailerons the horizontal tail the elevator the vertical tail the rudder and such the whole thing made of carbon fiber and and, and, and you also have a camera yes, here we, we have here a camera so that the the person monitoring the flight can even see where the bird is pointing and we have another camera in the payload bay which is looking vertically we, down. We, we, we will talk of that as we go along. Now how many countries have developed this technology? Okay. So the first to do this was the Zephyr in the UK which is mm. now a part of Airbus and they currently hold the world record for a 64 day flight over uh, uh, the U.S., over the, uh, I think, uh, uh, Arizona desert, uh, chosen uh, also because of its good climatic conditions and uh, that there are no, not many flights there to disturb it. So, uh, other than that, there are other countries like the U.K., Germany, uh, New Zealand, uh, Japan, uh, uh, so which are also trying such uh, efforts. Uh, as of now, there's only one multi-day flying vehicle, and that is the zip. Now, Dang. it can also be used to monitor what our enemies are doing. Now, where do you place your surveillance cameras? Is it in that small little hump there? Yes. So basically, every aircraft of this kind has what's called a payload bay, yeah. and the payload uh, and it has a ca payload capability. The payload mm. capability of the full-scale uh, uh, high-altitude platform, or HAP for short, uh, of uh, CSIR NAL, will have a payload capability of 15 kgs, and it is kept inside that little uh, hump-like uh, box. Can, does it have to be only a normal daylight optical camera, or can it do day and night surveillance using synthetic aperture radar? Yes, there are a variety of payloads and visage. 
it can do electro optic that's uh, daylight it can do uh, infrared it can do synthetic aperture radar which can look through uh, foliage and such and cloud cover so basically the the possibilities are limited only by the uh, limit of the payload which at 15 kg is large enough for any of these no. so are you telling me that like you can use this it'll fly up and above atmosphere and then fly i guess over a certain country so over an enemy country and you can use this to spy on that country without that country even knowing that it's there y'all hit me in the comment section because wouldn't the satellites catch it wouldn't the country satellites catch it if this was in the air? I don't know. Uh, I'd love to hear from you guys. This is crazy. Why do you need to fly it at 20 kilometer altitude? Okay. So basically, whenever you are talking of uh, 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 an aircraft which is incredibly persistent and long endurance, you want to be above the weather. And we know that cumulonimbus clouds top out at most 16 kilometers. You have also have air traffic, which is up to 15 kilometers in most places. Finally, uh, you want you know that the power required to fly increases with altitude, but the winds also decrease with altitude. At 20 mm. to 23 kilometers, there's a sweet spot. And that is where it is chosen. Beyond that, again, the winds start increasing. So now, is there, is, see, if you're monitoring enemy territory, you can also be targeted by ground-based missiles or airborne missiles. How easy a target okay. would a small bird like this? Because it does not yeah. have defenses. Okay. So, so the reason, the way to do this is, uh, in a way, it's like what I call peep into your neighbor's yard. So, uh, while staying within Indian territory, it is possible for this aircraft because it is high up enough to look at the area of interest around the border. You never even need to uh, uh, travel into what is called contested airspace. Dang. You can be safe within your airspace and by sheer dint of the payloads which are there, look deep into enemy territory. No, I didn't even think about that. I didn't think I'm glad he answered my question. So if you commented and answered, I guess I didn't really need it. I just needed to let it play some more. That's crazy. While we do this, how soon can we have the full scale model? Okay, mm -hmm. We have two very hostile neighbors which need to be constantly watched. Yeah. Okay. Uh as far as the aircraft itself goes, the projection currently of uh, this uh, uh, pro uh, project deadline is sometime December of 2025 for the aircraft. Mind you, it will take a while for this to eventually get integrated into the national airspace system. The payloads are also being developed even as we speak. So. I, I would say within a few years, we should see some progress on that. Dang. Thanks a lot for speaking to me, Dr. Venkata Krishnan, and explaining the concept of a high altitude platform. That's so, this so is awesome. An aeroplane, but can do the job of a satellite. So hangs in between an aeroplane and a satellite at a fraction of the cost, but do the job which a spy satellite can do. Dang. A very important technology which yeah. India is developing to protect its borders and also help if there are disaster situations. With camera person Govin in the hangar, of the National Aerospace Laboratories in Bangalore, Pallav Bagla for NDTV. That's so freaking cool. Uh, just getting to know that <laughs> that's even that, that that we're even capable of making something like that. Like 
that's dope. Shout out India once again. Um, and they said there's like five or six countries right now in the process of trying to build kind of the same thing. And so, I don't know. That's just very fascinating to me. Um, the capabilities of this platform or airplane are just endless, it seems like. And we're only going to continue and continue to evolve and continue and continue to innovate. So, it's just incredible. Let's see what India does next. That's all we have. If you enjoyed, please don't forget to subscribe. Give the video a thumbs up and check out the next one. See you guys next time.